steadily rising rental housing and the increasing lack of affordable housing in Montgomery County has reignited the discussion whether to expand or enact rent control provisions. Nancy, the county council and the county executive are continually bemoaning the lack of affordable housing and seem to believe that rent control will help solve this problem. But Montgomery County's tried this with rent control before, and we have kind of a soft rent control in place anyway. And the, so the, when we tried it in the past, it resulted in fewer units of rental housing. You know, why is the majority of the council prepared to march down this path again? Uh, I don't know. Um, politically uh, correctness, I guess, is driving this. Um, you know, Tacoma Park has had rent control for many, many years, and it has completely stopped any new construction there. Um, it's, it's a terrible thing, if you ask me. Uh, there's a simple issue of supply and demand, uh, and this will, you know, again, put a damper on that. Adam Pagnuco, in his uh, great uh, newsletter, um, Montgomery Perspective, Laid out has laid out all the economic issues associated with this issue with this uh, matter, uh, but the fact remains: um, people who build housing to provide more housing are not doing it for philanthropic reasons. There is a math to this. You need to have significant capital to make these projects happen, and you know it, it's just going to force the county to put more and more money of, of taxpayer money into these projects so that if they're gonna get constructed, they're gonna con get constructed largely by the private sector, by the public, se by a nonprofit sector. You know, time and time again, um, you know, uh, people will speak out of both sides of their mouths as far as I'm concerned. The challenge of constructing anything here is very onerous to begin with, the process is daunting, demanding, and costly. And year after year, the impact fees that are dumped on these projects are making them increasingly unaffordable as it is. So to say to a property owner, well, you can't charge uh, a rent that's going or an increase that's gonna permit you to maintain a facility, that's a real problem. And you know the private sector isn't going to go into it. Uh, it's been stymied historically, and it's you know it's a terrible challenge. And I they're just going to make it worse. I was interested to see that Kate Stewart, who has seen this all in Tacoma Park, had issued a statement about her support for this. So it looks like they're going to go in this direction. I think it's very very regrettable. And once again, it sends a message to the um, to the business community. Um, don't come here. Well, um, uh, I, I, I may be stealing your your message, Casey, but uh, it, it's a well, real. Well, you know, problem. I'm a I'm a free I'm a, a free market guy, and I believe mm -hmm. I believe that you know if we unshackle businesses, they will you know they will go to uh, develop if they have the opportunity. I want to go to Lori. New research examining how rent control affects tenants and housing markets does offer insight in how rent control affects markets uh, in the short run. They help tenants in the short run, but in the long run, as Nancy has indicated, it de decreases affordability, it fuels gentrification, and creates negative spillovers on the surrounding neighborhoods. So, you know, again, you know, kind of why are we marching down this path where we've gone into this path of darkness before. Yeah, I agree with Nancy. Um, Adam Pugnuco, uh, he wrote an excellent article, which really, I think we really need to educate our voters so they can understand what's been going on. Um, you know, in, uh, inflation and high mortgage rates in the early 80s led to interference from the federal government, which um, when they imposed rent control, and then Montgomery County, Montgomery County has a pattern of liking to do, they like to do one better than the federal government with almost everything. Uh, so that when the federal government pulled back on this, they started their own program, uh, which Adam explained, uh, and it led to a volatile system for builders um, and landlords and it failed miserably. Um, and instead of helping renters, it uh, created, it, it turned the apartments into condos and drove people out. And we don't want that. We don't want to see that happen over again. Um, lessons have already been learned. Um, rent controls don't work. 
Um, the market does work uh, and inflation is painful. We're going through it right now, but it's temporary and we've got to ride through it. Uh, Democrats, they always feel they have to control things, right? <laughs> um, so it goes on and on uh, and mistakes keep repeating themselves. Uh, and, and maybe it's because the rent control is a short-term solution that makes voters happy and they'll vote for these people. And when you, you know, that are currently in office, uh, because they've already raised our property taxes a whole lot. So they need something to help get votes. And so this is maybe that what they're reaching for to help them get uh, more votes. So, you know, you know, Nancy, that. you mentioned uh, the involvement of the nonprofits and the county government. I mean, in today's, you know, press release, there was a release about how the county just purchased the, the Westchester West apartments uh, from a, you know, from and then was uh, then sold it to a nonprofit housing. But, but you know, mm -hmm. that's just moving the blocks around those those apartments already exist. And you're just moving you know, the ownership around from, you know, private, private investment to nonprofit, although I'm <clears throat> the real issue, and I think you, you, you know, touched on it in, in your, your earlier comments is development. We need, we need development and we need dense, more dense development to house the number of people that want to come here. And of course, last year we had this huge fight over Montgomery Thrive 2050 um, plan, which, you know, still, is you know contentious. So, you know, what's the solution? We seem to be chasing our tail a little bit, Nancy. Well, you know, it's there's a lot of talk, but the ability to follow through is quite constrained. And as I said earlier, um, it's going to force uh, the government to increase its subsidies. Uh, to uh, developers to build this stuff if they actually want to see it constructed. Now, I will say one thing about our county executive, he's always been consistent on this. He's opposed to development. He is. And so this is consistent with his history. Um, what's interesting is the apparent willingness of the, the larger size council to, I guess, go along with it. Um, and I haven't really heard of too many outliers. Maybe uh, Mr. Friedson won't uh, support it, but by and large, um, that's what, you know, uh, that is, seems to be the, yeah. the song they're singing. Well, look, I mean, you can only, you know, I mean, the, this is the, this is, you know, the marketplace, you know, does work and it, when there's a lack of supply, you know, uh, prices prices will go up, and you know, I I know that when you convert, you know, the little diddle, you know, dirty little secret is when you convert on a building to condominiums, the developer makes out like a bandit, because they mm -hmm. they then go from owning the building to manage just managing the building, and all those HOA fees and condo fees go right into into their pocket. So it's 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 really not a solution for anything. Um, and I hope our leaders, you know, reconsider this.